I'm CK. I've done a number of videos on inexpensive surface mount heat guns and as I was browsing around Amazon the other day I saw this which is a really inexpensive digital soldering iron. This came in at right now this is October 2023 this came in at $12 US which would be really good for a digitally controlled temperature uh, controlled soldering iron. So let's take it out of the package, see how it works. And I hope you enjoy the video. Here's the package. It's from, uh, where's my pointer? I don't, can't find my pointer, I'll use some. It's from Q-Ming, uh, 110 or 220 volts. It's not marked, but it comes with a 110 plug, so we're going to assume it's 110. On the back it says, thank you for choosing, compact lightweight, ceramic heating core, preset temperature and maintain constant temp, reach the desired temp rapidly in around 15 seconds, use and maintaining it, don't shock this thing too much, you may need to clean and tin the tip, after it cools down clean with wet sponge, don't file it. Uh, after tip is clean, then reach. Da, 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 pop. Nothing much. Warning: Do not touch heated soldering iron head and casing. Do not use in inflammable, explosive, damp place. Replacement of iron head and heating core must wait until cold. That all makes sense. I appreciate it. And this is from uh, Dongguan Mingqiu Technology Inc. in. Uh, Dongguan City, China. And again, it was US $12, which is pretty inexpensive. I mean, it's really inexpensive, actually. Let's get this. On the back, it's got a picture of other irons that they make. Here's a more complete instruction manual in many languages, English and uh, Chinese and Spanish and French and German and uh, Italian, I believe. Okay, Let's see if there's anything interesting here. Power off, temperature adjustment, right? In the state of not starting up, press or hold the plus or minus key and then start up again. Then it'll switch between LCD, uh, between Celsius or Fahrenheit. I think I'm going to do this in Fahrenheit today. Temperature calibration after 90 seconds. Uh, and then you can... Uh, See what we do, we can adjust the temperature. Okay, so I've got my fluke with a, a K-type thermocouple plugged in. So we'll be playing around with that. Let me get that turned on. Now we'll just look at stuff. Here's a little sponge, that's nice. Here's a stand, minimal stand, but we'll put the sponge in there, it's always good. This, uh, Kickstand does not lock, but I think it'll be fine anyway. Let me get rid of this piece of paper. Then we've got some solder. This is... Oh, it's interesting. It's got a Prop 65 California warning on the solder, even though it's a worldwide product. Uh, I don't know if this is leaded or lead-free. I'm probably not going to use this solder. I've got other solder that I know the composition of that I'll use. Here we have five additional soldering irons, I mean soldering iron tips, a thin chisel, a thick, I mean a thin cone, a thick cone, a chisel, a angle chisel, and a blade. That's handy. It comes equipped with a um, rather large conical, which I think I'll just switch out while we're here. 110 volts, 80 watts, which is not bad. That's good. Uh, I'm going to take the little 
plastic off that. Buttons are not real clicky, they're just kind of mushy. It's got an on-off switch, which most soldering irons do not have, so that's an advantage. The plastic and the rubber is okay, it's not the highest quality, but it's okay. And we've got a twist tie, a single twist tie, which is twisted in the appropriate direction, which I appreciate. Okay, let's see what we got if we undo it. Huh, that's interesting. I want to change the tip and the whole thing rotated. Let me hold the plastic down and rotate just that. That's on there pretty tight. First thing I'm going to be checking is to see how uh, The head, the soldering tip is not real tight against the ceramic heating element. I like them a little more snug, but that's okay. There's a groove here. I don't know what that's for. So I'm going to put this away and use one of the other, one of the smaller soldering tips because I never, I mean, I use something like that if I'm using, you know, putting together a big. Ah, oh, guitar amp with real thick wire or whatever. So I'll slide that on. Again, there, there's a, wow, there's a lot of slop in that. I mean, it's moving, you take a look, it's moving a couple of millimeters back and forth around the ceramic. Let me check this. This one's tighter. This one's really loose. I don't like that much because it means there's less heat transfer from the ceramic element to the soldering tip, which could definitely make your temperatures a little more erratic. Let me try another one. That's a little bit better, but it's still pretty sloppy, huh? So that's not a positive. Well, while I'm here, I'm going to see what this does when I do unscrew this piece of plastic. And this is plastic to plastic right here. So it exposes all the ceramic heating element and a little piece of high temperature silicon insulation. And there are two contacts here. Now let me put this back together without breaking the ceramic. Now we'll put this tip on and put the shroud back on, which should stabilize it, but it's still going to be a millimeter distant from the core. It doesn't move when the shroud is fully in, so that's a good thing. Okay, I'm going to pause the cameras for a little bit so I can plug everything in and get ready to do some testing. All right, the first thing we're going to do, I read over the calibration steps again, so we'll redo that first. So we'll put, we'll turn the thing on first, and we'll see if the LED light, yep, lights up. It's in C. I decided, you may notice here, I decided to change to uh, centigrade on here uh, for the calibration. So it's heating up very quickly, 250, it's in C again, uh, 250, 290, 300. They recommend calibrating at 320. Now this is climbing way up, so I'm going to stop it. It was easy. As soon as I made an adjustment, uh, it stopped climbing, and now it's, I'm resetting it to 320. It says to let it stabilize for about 90 seconds. Oh man, it's already hot enough to uh, solder with, which is really cool. So while we're waiting 90 seconds, I'm going to try one thing that some people have fussed at me about, but it's reasonable to me. I'm going to see if the cable is high temperature silicon. No, it's not. Okay, that's a problem for me. Again, I said this in another one. That means if you 
And as you can see, I'm setting this down on its little stand, which works just fine. Uh, while it is highly unlikely you are going to set your iron down on the power cord, it has happened, as I've said uh, before, I've done it at least three times myself in uh, six decades, five and a half decades of soldering, and this will melt through the insulation and then potentially melt through the wires inside and cause you a problem. Uh, as, an, as a counterexample, here's my Weller, and if I put, it's got high temperature on everything, I'm getting wires all twisted up, so I can run the solder iron up and down that all day and it doesn't burn through it. So again, it's not something that's going to happen frequently. However, if you're working quickly, being casual, and you set your iron down and you don't realize you've put it on the cable, this could burn through that, and that's not good, in my opinion. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily a deal breaker, even though I don't know how I would feel about it, but it is certainly something that you should be aware of, that you have to be very careful about this. So that's been about 90 seconds of blabbing. So let's see what 320 on the on the iron means. It's at up. I'm trying to get some solder on it so I get the best heat transfer. Shows up at about 321, 323. That seems pretty good to me. I'm not going to touch the calibration on this. This seems very, very pretty accurate out of the box. I'm going to go up uh, another. Let me go up to 370. My solder burned off, so let me put some more on here. We're just using solder on the iron simply to ensure we have the most heat transfer to the thermocouple. This is a K-type thermocouple. So I've set it to 370, and it's at 370 within allowable limits, within 3 degrees, and this uh, K-type thermocouple is only good for uh, 2.5 degree C ac uh, plus or minus accuracy, so I'm not going to try to go any finer than that. This is well calibrated and just dandy. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is actually solder something, because what's the point? So let me get this. This cable is a little stiff also. Our power cord is a little stiff also, but that could simply because be because it's new. I'm trying to find a good position for me to hold it at. And I'm going to take this back down to about 350. For soldering right now. Let me set it down again and get a little piece of something or other, some kit that I'm not going to build on camera because it's way too... I've done too many kits like this, so... I'll just slap this. We'll take a resistor, because we got to have resistor time even if we're just testing a product. Put this 1K resistor in here. And get a piece of leaded solder, because I'm in the U.S. and we don't care about leaded solder most places. And we'll try this tip and we'll solder it up. Oh, look at that. Doing a fine job. That's fine. Again, it's pretty hot. 350 is pretty hot, but I tend to go, I tend to run my irons hotter than some other folks. Now I've got some lead-free solder, uh, some LF99, which 
we'll try Oops. Lead, lead free off takes more. Hey, look at that. It just solders it right up. Okay. Not much more to show than that. Let me turn. I'm, oh, let me turn my meter back on again to uh, temperature. And uh, where's my. Where's the end? And we're going to watch how quickly the temperature decays when I turn it off. So I just turned it off and of course lost it. I turned the switch off. So this, I'm not going to wait for it to go all the way to zero because that's going to be too tedious for me. It's still hot. So it takes a while for temperature to decay, but it sure comes up to temperature very rapidly and it adjusts between temperature very well. So I'm going to give this one a B. Uh, it's really good. For $12 it's fantastic. And being able to control temperature is really good. And again, it was very rapid in coming up to temp and it solders really well. I give it a B because the tips are sloppy. Uh, the ceramic heating element doesn't fill them completely well. And the fact that the power cord is not high temperature silicon is something you just have to be really careful with if you get this and use it because you do not want to set your iron on this inadvertently and cause a problem. I didn't even check this. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to while we're here, and we're going to come up to temp again really fast. I didn't check the temperature safety of that. The stand, it should be just fine, but for completeness sake, I want to check it. It's at 350, and the stand is not showing any. Oh, no, it is. Okay, if you hold it for an extended period of time, you may be able to see the dots there. If you hold it, now this also, this is going to, if you, if this folds down on you because it doesn't lock in place accidentally and you set this down or you set it down uh, wrong, it will also melt a little bit, which is not great. So some better plastics on the power cord and the soldering iron stand would be great. But other than that, for U.S. $12 on Amazon. This is a very fine product. I hope you enjoyed the video.